Welcome back as we again go to our MDEX Wheel of Harmony to pick at random one of these 12 harmonic techniques. So after we pick our technique, we'll talk briefly about it, describe what it is and maybe how it works, and then pick a jazz standard uh, that we can apply it to. And remember, it's from the perspective of these 12 harmonic techniques that we can truly understand how harmony works in jazz, uh, help us to memorize songs, help us to transpose songs, and also reharmonize on the fly. So having said that, let's spin the wheel and see what we come up with this time. Right, the sub five, let's do it. So sub five stands for substitute of the five chord, which means a chord that you can replace a five chord with, be it primary or secondary. The sub five is the only other dominant chord in music that contains the same tritone as the five seven. For example, if you have an E seven, the tritone is between the third and the seventh, which are G sharp and D respectively. The sub five is then B flat seven, and the tritone in B flat seven is D and A flat. So it is the same exact pair of notes, A flat being an enharmonic of the G sharp. So the B flat seven is a great substitution of E seven. One important property of the sub five is that it is a half step above the root of the target. E seven is the five chord of an A chord, and it's a perfect fifth away. The B flat seven is the sub five of A, and it is a half step above. All right, so how do we use the sub five in a song? This is a very simple concept, and the only thing that we have to do is find a dominant chord that resolves a perfect fifth down. In other words, find a dominant chord that resolves to its target, or a chord with the root of the target. So here I have Autumn Leaves as shown in the Jazz Standards for Marishan Book, which is going to save us a lot of time since the songs in this book show you the entire harmonic analysis and most importantly, it shows you the arrows and brackets analysis. Remember, an arrow indicates a movement of a fifth on the bass from a dominant chord, which for us today is like a sign that says, you can replace this chord with the sub five. So at one glance, I see all the chords where I could use a sub five. Can we apply it on every chord that matches our criteria? Yeah, you can, but you always wanna consider balance. You don't wanna overuse it. Make sure your substitutions are worth it. Just remember, in context, the sub five offers an altered sound. And we're gonna take a look at this property later on. So if I want, I can replace this D7 on the second measure of autumn leaves with the sub five of the flat three, this G chord. So this is how it sounds with the original chord, the D7, the five seven of flat three. And this is how it sounds with the A flat seven, the sub five of the flat three. In mapping tonal harmony, these chords are very easy to find. They're always on the opposite side of the five seven within the circle of fifths. So here's the flat three, and here are the secondary functions of the flat three. You can see the sub five is the chord on the opposite side of the five seven of the flat three. In our key of E minor, that's an A flat seven. A very important thing to notice is that every sub five is paired with the Lydian flat seven scale. This is because the sub five is actually a five seven altered chord with a root, a tritone away. Let me show you. In our example, we're substituting the D seven with the A flat seven, right? The A flat is a tritone away from the D and the guide tones in the D seven chord, F sharp and C, are also the guide tones in A flat seven. F sharp is the third in D seven and the flat seven as it relates to the A flat seven, which of course we can write enharmonically as a G flat. And the C is the flat seven in D seven and the third in the A flat seven. So let's say we wanna replace the D seven with D seven altered using modal interchange. 
By the way, if you don't know what modal interchange is, we will eventually get to it. It's in our wheel of harmony. For now, just know that you can always take a dominant chord and pair it with the altered scale. So this is D7 altered. Everything is altered in this chord. If we look at the altered scale in Tessitura Pro, we can see this chord has a flat nine, a sharp nine, a flat 13, and even a flat five, which is also the sharp 11. Also, this altered scale is the seventh mode of melodic minor. And if we look here, we see that the Lydian flat seven is also one of the modes of the melodic minor. So the altered scale and the Lydian flat seven are related modes. And if we look at the related modes of D altered by turning the graph around the circle of fifths in order to make A flat the root, we get an A flat Lydian flat seven scale. So the D seven altered has the exact same notes as the A flat Lydian flat seven. This is why I said the sub five is an altered version of the five seven, and it is always paired with the Lydian flat seven scale. So this set of notes from the perspective of the A flat seven paired with the Lydian flat seven gives you an A flat seven with a nine, a sharp 11, and a 13. That's why when you look at every single sub five chord in mapping tonal harmony, you see that they're all seven sharp 11 chords. So when you use a sub five, make sure to use voicings that work with the Lydian flat seven. In other words, use a nine, a sharp 11, and or a 13 as your tensions. You don't have to use them all, but avoid using flat nine, sharp nine, or flat 13. Let me give you one tip. If you want to include all tensions, use the major triad upper structure on the second degree of the sub five. In our example, play a B flat major triad over the A flat seven. Okay, so here's Autumn Leaves using sub fives. And remember, it's all about being honest and playing things that you like. As long as you follow the rules I gave you to play using the sub five, your sound will be coherent and consistent. In this video, we used the jazz standards book that comes with all the jazz standards fully analyzed. Also, Tessitura Pro with all the scales and music and plenty of features to practice and study scales. Also, Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro. I'll put a link in the description down below if you want to check out any of these resources. Remember, you can always support our YouTube channel by getting any of our books or apps. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.